shall see him no more, neither shall his place any more behold him. His children shall seek to please the poor, and his hands shall restore their goods. His bones are full of the sin of his youth, which shall lie down with him in the dust. Though wickedness be sweet in his mouth, though he hide it under his tongue, though he spare it and forsake it not, but keep it still within his mouth, yet his meat in his bowels is turned, it is the gall of ass within him. He hath swallowed down riches, he hath, he sh- and he shall vomit them up again. God shall cast them out of his belly. He shall suck the poison of ass, the viper's tongue shall slay, uh, shall slay him. He shall not see the rivers, the floods, the brooks of honey and butter, That which he labored for shall he restore and shall not swallow it down. According to his substance shall the restitution be, and he shall not rejoice therein. Because he hath oppressed and hath forsaken the poor, because he hath violently taken away an house which he builded not, surely he shall not feel quietness in his belly. He shall not save of that which he desired. There shall none of his meat be left, therefore shall no man look for his goods. In the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in straits. Every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. When he is about to fill his belly, God shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him and shall rain it upon him while he is eating. He shall flee from the iron weapon and the bow of steel shall strike him through. It is drawn and cometh out of the body. Yea, the glittering sword cometh out of his gall. Terrors are upon him. All darkness shall be hid in his secret places. A fire not blown shall consume him. It shall go ill with him that is left in his tabernacle. The heavens shall reveal his iniquity, and the earth shall rise up against him. The increase of his house shall depart, and his goods shall flow away in the day of his wrath. This is the portion of a wicked man from God, and the heritage appointed unto him by God. So Zophar... (laughs) Uh, here one would think that after Job had just expressed himself in such a way in the previous uh, chapter that the hardest of hearts would melt and be broken um, by Job's pleas of uh, begging his friends for some sympathy and uh, understanding and And if not by sympathy, by shame, you would think that they would uh, come to grips with what is actually going on in Job's life and that Zophar's response would be that of a broken and a contrite spirit. (laughs) However, as we've just read, Zophar uh, thought otherwise. Zophar isn't going to waste any time getting to the point. Here in this chapter, Uh, in response to Job's previous comment concerning judgment, if you remember back in uh, chapter 19, uh, Job, uh, after trying to get some sympathy, he he ended up his uh, his discourse with a with a with a warning, basically to these three gentlemen that were. Uh, totally misjudging the situation, totally misjudging Job. And he said in verse 28, But ye should say, Why persecute we him, seeing the root of the matter is found in me? Be afraid of the sword, for wrath bringeth the punishments of the sword, that ye may know there is a judgment. Job's warning is his three friends that, Listen, uh, you guys are going down the wrong path, uh, you, you, you've got the wrong idea, and, uh, you know, Payday's coming. And so Zophar hears that, and, and I don't know, um, Joe, he takes exception and begins a, to, he, he begins to take up a scathing comment uh, and rebuke against the supposed wickedness of Job. I don't know, perhaps uh, Zophar had thought to have said all that he was going to say to Job. Maybe he was done. He was about to to, to, to go, walk away and uh, leave it alone. 
but uh, something that Job had said had caused him to to uh, uh, want to revisit his uh, accusation, his his uh, slander, I guess you could call it, uh, with a sense of urgency, and 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 he says it. So he he says in verse two. Uh, therefore, do my thoughts cause me to answer? In other words, you know, he was he was sitting back and not saying anything uh, after his first uh, comments. But uh, the more Job spoke, uh, and the more his friends spoke, it uh, stirred something up with him within him again in his thoughts. And, and he says, "They've caused me to answer, and for this I make haste." He says, "I got to I got to get it out. I got to get it out now uh, before I forget what I'm going to say." And he says, I have heard the check of my reproach, and the spirit of my understanding causeth me to answer. The spirit of my understanding. Zophar seemingly is saying to Job, basically, and insinuating that Job's comments have been said in the spirit of emotion, uh, or in the spirit of def- uh, you know, defensiveness. Uh, and his own, his own comments will be that of a sound knowledge and experience. You know, Zophar says, listen, I'm not going to, I'm not just going to get all excited and hot and bothered and, and respond and, 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 and emotion as you have, Job. But uh, I'm going to uh, speak from experience and, and understanding and knowledge. And while it may be true that Job has spoken out of emotion, understandably so, I mean, uh, he's full of emotion, uh, just, a, just different waves of emotion come over him. Uh, again, not only has he lost everything, he's lost his family, uh, he's lost his health, he's lost his, his uh, pride, uh, which is part of, uh, I guess, this whole reason this situation is going on. But nonetheless, he's, uh, he's, now he's uh, uh, got his friends accusing him of wrongdoing that he hasn't done. And so naturally, you and I would ourselves re- react out of emotion and probably react... Uh, uh, with a with that sort of spirit of self uh, defense and defensiveness, but uh, with all that being said, his three friends here are anything but rational. Knowing what we know about Job from the book, they're they're just they're they're way off base, and so it's kind of comical when he when they make statements such as this. Uh, that, uh, you know, they're going to speak in the spirit of their understanding. And he says in verse 4, Knowest thou not this of old, since man was placed upon earth, that the triumphing of the wicked is short, and the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment? Notice once again, the truths found in these false accusations uh, uh, being hurled at Job by his three friends. Uh, the, the statements they make are true in, in and of themselves in, in general in the, in the sense of uh, wicked men and wickedness. They're just not true of Job, but we get the, we can understand, we can learn, we can uh, apply these things to us and, and, and understand how God reacts to wickedness and uh, but at the same time, we've got to keep remembering. We've got to keep it in our mind when we're studying, because we're studying the book of Job, we've got to remember that these men, what he's saying here, he's directing it towards Job. He's not just preaching. He's not just getting up and, 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 and preaching a sermon to a congregation and, and, and letting the chips fall where they may. He's deliberately addressing Job. And these comments that he makes are directed towards Job. But, nonetheless, it is an age-old truth that wicked men do triumph. Do they not? I mean, we've seen it in our time. We see it it's been since, since uh, man was placed upon the earth, Zophar says. Uh, you know, we... That's part of the thing that sometimes that discourages, I believe, a child of God and is because we forget uh, what... What's coming down the line? We forget uh, what the you know the the scope of eternity and in, in, in the essence of 
how how big eternity is and how long eternity is in the sense of uh, in comparison to time. You know, we think that you know the, our lifetime is is lasting forever, and when we're children, we think you know we're just going to live forever, and we don't grasp how short life is. James says it's but a vapor; it appeared for a little time and then vanisheth away. Uh, Zophar makes the comment that the triumphing of the wicked, even though they do triumph, even though they seemingly uh, do get away with murder, so to speak, but they're, 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 the, the leash is short. He said the triumphing of the wicked is short and the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment. There is pleasure in sin. Uh, one 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 problem that uh, I think we have with our with the young generation with kids is, you know, we in our attempt to to keep them isolated and insulated from the world, we you know we warn them about the the the, the downfalls of sin and and uh, and the outcome of it, but we don't warn them, and it should be a warning, and and uh, to make them understand that. Sin is pleasurable to this to this wicked flesh. All right, I mean not to the new man, obviously, but uh, to this flesh. That's why there's a draw. That's why men greater than us have fallen. Is because there is pleasure in sin, and we've got to warn them about that. That uh, listen, there, you know, uh, as Pastor said many times, drugs will make you feel wonderful. Alcohol will make you feel great, but it's just. For a short time, and the problem with it is, is that uh, that that time will will come to an end, and then you'll have to get it again to keep that feeling, to keep that uh, that that sense of uh, being on top of the world. You'll have to keep, and that's the that's the danger in it, and that's the draw because there is pleasure in sin. The Bible says for a season. Uh, God acknowledges, and, and he, he speaking of Moses in Hebrews chapter eleven, that uh, Moses, even though he he had been around it, he had been he brought he was brought up uh, in the world and, and and by you know Pharaoh and uh, the Egyptians, and he he lived in, in that, and he knew the pleasures in paganism, all the 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 the, the riches it brought, and all the the fame and. And all the, the 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 seemingly joy that it brought, but the Bible says in Hebrews chapter eleven that Moses chose rather to suffer affliction with his people than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. What Moses knew, and what you and I should understand, and what we should teach our kids is: yeah, there you you could. You can enjoy yourself down here. You can live it up. You can and 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 uh, forget about the things of God and forget about your 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 upbringing, and 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 just enjoy yourself down here. But that's only going to last for a short period of time, and eternity is going to be much much longer. You can't even begin to. Uh, you you could go out to the ocean and take a grain of sand and toss it into the ocean, and that's. The, the idea of time and eternity. Eternity doesn't end. And so, while we could enjoy ourselves down here, we could, we could shoot to, to be successful down here, and, 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 and if God, peradventure, will allow it, praise the Lord. But if, but if He chooses so not to allow us to, to, uh, to gather all the things that our dreams want to uh, accomplish, and gather all the the things that we want to have in this life, we, uh, we just know that uh, the, the, the joy that is set before us in eternity much outweighs the, the pleasures and sin down here. If we can keep that in our mind, if we can keep that in front of our children, there is some hope. It's wicked men, wickedness, and, and evil. And, and when, I, when we say that, we're talking... Uh, we're not far removed from it. The only thing that separates us from wicked men and evil is the blood of Jesus Christ. 
And the only thing that keeps us, uh, keeps us holy and keeps us clean is the righteousness of Jesus, Jesus Christ. But uh, it, it, people that are not saved and that uh, live a wicked life, though they enjoy the taste of victory and experience joy in their revelry, uh, they, they do, and, and they know not that their pleasure will soon turn to torment. Psalms 37.1, a psalm of David, reads like this, Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Uh, we, we, look at the, we look at news, we look at, you know, uh, we often go to, you know, uh, bring out the, 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 the evil that's going on in our present government and things, and it's, you know, it's, to us it's new because it's in our time, but, I mean, it's been going on forever. Nothing new under the sun. Uh, you know, we, I was listening to, uh, I think it was Rush Limbaugh this week, and one of the things that, that really irks me about him, and, uh, uh, you know, he's conservative, and, you know, he's got the right idea as far as politics goes sometimes, but uh, he's always uh, uh, making fun of these conspiracy theorists, you know. And, uh, and while I'm not one to, you know, you know uh, I, I, I agree in the sense that, uh, you know, you don't want to get wrapped up in it and because you're never, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to, uh, uh, let's put it this way, you're not going to uh, pull them out of the closet. I mean, it, you know, consp- but, the, but the problem is conspiracies have been going on since, uh, since the first uh, conspirator. <laughs> Satan conspired. I mean, to, to, to overthrow God, to, to set above the throne of God. And you look around, you look at the world, you look at the, the way that the situation that the world's in now, and you think, well, he's, he's winning. If you didn't know the Bible, if you didn't know the end from the beginning, if we didn't have God's word on it, man, we, would, you know, we wouldn't have a whole lot of positive outlook. Uh, the only reason we can rejoice is because we know how it's going to end. Amen. We've read the back of the book. We know we win. We know God wins. But you look at uh, the world and, and history and you think, boy, man, Satan's really got a handle on this thing. And he's just, he's, he's, he's winning. Uh, no, he may seemingly be winning, but it's just for a short period of time. Uh, when the Bible addresses the wicked, uh, here in, in this case and in all, uh, uh, throughout the book of Job, as we've seen, it is a uh, prophetical reference to that wicked one, the Antichrist, that will uh, seemingly uh, get the victory for a short period of time during the tribulation period. But that, wick, that victory will be short. It will be short-lived. Psalms 92 and verse 6 says, A brutish man knoweth not, neither doth a fool understand this. When the wicked spring as the grass, and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. The only heaven that they see is down here. The only heaven that they'll ever enjoy is this brief span of time. And then for all eternity, they're going to be in hell, tormented forever and ever in the lake of fire because they chose rather to enjoy the pleasures of sin here than to suffer with Christ. The only hell we will ever see is down here. Uh, sometimes it does seem like hell is on earth uh, in the sense of the, the devastation that Satan can cause in, in, in lives of people. But that's the only hell we'll ever see. Uh, the song uh, says, the only fire I'll ever feel, amen, is burning in my heart. Uh, we'll never have to experience the, the eternal torments of hell. We'll never have to experience the punishment of God. We'll never have to experience the, the, the wrath of God. Because of what Christ had done for us. But the triumphing of the wicked, though it is short, they do get a victory every once in a while. Zophar is mocking Job here, uh, basically saying, who couldn't have saw this coming? Knowest thou not this of old, since man was placed upon the earth, that the triumph in the wicked is short, and the joy of the hypocrite for, but for a moment? He says, did you really think you were going to get away with it forever, Job? And it's comical when we read it, because we know that Job hasn't done anything wicked. But so far, he's, he's adamant, he's, he's very confident that 
listen, Job, are you, did you really think that you were going to get away with your wickedness forever? Isn't it evident that God has finally caught up with you and got your number? Notice again the reference here to Adam's, uh, the creation of man, Adam, and, and, and most likely here a reference also to Cain. Uh, instead of uh, a discussion around Pharaoh and the Egyptians, this, this again, once again, points out that Job here is not a, a uh, contemporary of Moses or, or, or even of David. Long before Moses came on the scene, Job was written, and Job experienced this, uh, this, these events. The rest of the chapter, as we've read already, as we'll see as we go along, It's pretty much more the same attack against Job. Uh, Zophar, while possibly before he had been a little, held held back a little bit, and he pulls no punches now. He's he's letting it all loose on Job. Uh, He's tired of hearing Job uh, uh, defend himself and complain about his lot in life when he obviously, quote-unquote, deserved it. (laughs) Not really. Uh, But he goes on to say in verse 6, back in Job chapter 20, speaking of the wicked, Job himself, he so far mentions, Though his excellency mount up to the heavens, and his head reach unto the clouds, yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. They which have seen him shall say, Where is he? He shall fly away as a dream and shall not be found, yet he shall be chased away as a vision of the night. The eye also which saw him shall see him no more, neither shall his place any more behold him. Mankind, in all his wickedness, has been allowed, by the mercy and grace of God, uh, to accomplish great feats. Um, and man has come to believe that these accomplishments that, they've, that, that, that we've accomplished, that we've uh, uh, accumulated are the result of our own power and our own might. And man in general has failed to give God the glory. That's why, uh, in our country anyway, that's why we're in the predicament we're in now. Our country was started by uh, men that knew that God, if God, if this country was going to be anything great, God was going to have to do it. And God was going to, and as God miraculously delivered us from England, and God miraculously allowed this country to expand and grow and, and, and all the things that uh, were accomplished in this country by uh, hard-working Americans, somewhere down the line, we started taking credit. And when that happens, when, when you steal God's glory, uh, God doesn't look kindly to that. Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 3 says, The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, that thou dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? Americans, uh, some Americans started thinking, you know, we're, 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 too, we're, too, we're too mighty to be defeated. Well, God showed us that uh, was wrong on September 11th. We, were, we are vulnerable. He says, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. God will give, a, give you enough rope to hang yourself, if you so choose. Ma- uh, Jesus Christ warned in Matthew chapter 11, verse 23, said, he said, And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, uh, you know, the, they're obviously... Their fame had been known abroad. They, the, you know, their uh, riches and their uh, accomplishments had exalted them. Christ says to heaven, he says, you shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. In other words, they would have repented. Christ said, if, 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 if I would have been... Uh, at, in the days of Sodom and, and, and doing the miracles that I've done there, they would have repented a long, before, long time ago. And if in America, and we have been, uh, the things that we've seen, the things that we've seen God accomplish in this country, 
and to 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 hold back the glory to him and to try to take his name out of our schools and take his uh, his commandments out of our courtrooms. He's I I I, I fear that uh, just as and and Jesus Christ told us as it was in the days of Lot. We are going to endure some, uh, if, if, if God doesn't send revival, if God doesn't uh, spark something real quickly, amen, we're, uh, we're, headed, we're headed down the, uh, the steep slope very quickly. Uh, I mean, it seems like uh, things are just moving so fast in the wrong direction uh, that uh, we're, we're, in, we're in for a world of hurt. If God does not send revival in this country again. Here uh, in these verses, this is an obvious reference to the events surrounding the confounding of the tongues in Babel in Genesis chapter 11. Turn Turn back to Genesis chapter 11. Job says, though his excellency mount up to the heavens, or Zophar says, and his head reach unto the clouds, yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. Genesis chapter 11 and familiar passages, but we'll uh, read these just to get uh, an idea of what Zophar is referring to. Again, not not so far removed from it. You know, he's these Job was you know written early on um, in history, and so they're not too far removed from the flood and Noah, and and obviously prior to that here this. or the, the sons of God, and then now here the, the Tower of Babel. The Bible says here in Genesis chapter 11, And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech, and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And remember, when, when they came off the ark, when they came off the ark and God told Noah and his sons, he said, listen, this is where you guys, uh, you know, the problem is everybody getting together. You know, it seems like a good thing, you know, you know, unity. And he says, but there's just some certain, uh, there's certain things about that, you know, you just need to separate. Uh, you need to go your own ways, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and you guys just need to stay in your boundaries. And uh, so when everybody, you know, starts gathering together, in, you know, in this great melting pot that we have, uh, Man seems to get the idea that they can collectively accomplish what these men sought to accomplish here in Genesis chapter 11. When they should have separated and went their own ways, they decided to stay together. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them throughly. And they had brick for stone and slime they had for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. They weren't satisfied with the name that God gave them. They weren't satisfied with the position and, and the direction that God was giving. They said, "We got to make a name for ourselves. We got to, we got to make, we got to, uh, you know, promote and market our our own product <laughs> because uh, you know we've got the answers." And the Lord came down, verse 5, to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. And they have all one language. And this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. God knew what He put in man. God knew when He created Adam, the ingenuity that He put into him, He made him in His own image at that time. And the man lost that image, but He still had that that uh, the 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 makeup and the and the wherewithal and the and the wisdom that God put in man, that He didn't put in the animals. <laughs> That's why we don't worship animals. That's why we don't you know lift animals up on a pedestal above man or equal to man even. God said, "There's something about man, and if he's restrained, if we uh, in, in his sinful nature and his sinful condition, if if we don't put a put a put a hold on it, if we don't put a a, a, a stop to it, he's gonna." He's going to try to do some things that's not going to be good. And his imaginations, while if it was, uh, 
if he had the mind of Christ, if he had the mind of God, he could do great things with that wisdom and with that, with that ingenuity. And we've seen that with saved inventors down through history. God using men to, to, to do great things. But at the same time, with that sinful nature unrestrained, that imagination can also lead to, to much evil. He says, go to, in verse 7, let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from, the th- from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. And so God took what man had accomplished up to that point and said, okay, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna slow this train down a little bit, confounded the languages, and, and here we are. Zophar is obviously referencing that, but uh, in the future, a good example of that was Nebuchadnezzar. Turn to uh, Daniel chapter 4. Daniel chapter 4. If you remember, God says that said that called Nebuchadnezzar his servant. He said, yeah, Nebuchadnezzar was a wicked king. He was a wicked empire, emperor. Yes, he was. But he was used of God. <clears throat> to accomplish something. And God allowed him to you know, get to the position he was at. Obviously, God sets up kings and pulls them down. And it's somewhere along the line, Nebuchadnezzar began, you know, seeing some things with with uh, the children of Israel, seeing some things about their God, and had all that that uh, uh, that testimony in front of him. Here in Daniel chapter four. Let's begin reading verse 1. It says, Nebuchadnezzar the king unto all the people, nations and languages that dwell in all the earth. Peace be multiplied unto you. I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God hath wrought toward me. How great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation. And you say, wait a minute, Nebuchadnezzar is giving glory to God. Yes, he is. God is starting to get his attention. Then he begins to tell about his life and and how he came to to this understanding about the God of Israel. He says, I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in mine house and flourishing in my palace. Uh, One of the things about our country is after World War II and after, you know, uh, things started to die down and we started to, to, you know, I mean, things were booming and uh, we just, uh, you know, started getting a little lax, getting a little resting on our laurels, as you could say. And we were resting and here, just like Nebuchadnezzar. And he said, I saw a dream which uh, made me afraid and the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. Therefore made I a decree to bring it all, bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me, that they might make known unto me the inter- interpretation of the dream. Then came in the magicians and the astrologers, the Chaldeans and the soothsayers. And I told the dream before them, but they did not make known unto me the interpretation thereof. But at the last Daniel came in before me, whose name was Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God, and in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And before him I told the dream, saying... O Belteshazzar, master of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in thee, and no secret troubleth thee. Tell me the vision of my dream that I have seen, and the interpretation thereof. Thus were the visions of mine head and my bed, and I saw, and behold, a tree in the midst of the earth, and the height thereof was great. The tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached into heaven, and the sight thereof to the end of all the earth. The leaves thereof were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and it was meat for all. The beasts of the field had shadow under it, and the fowls of the heaven dwelt in the bows thereof, and all flesh was fed of it. 
I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and a holy one came down from heaven. And he cried aloud and said this, said thus, Hew down the tree and cut off his branches, shake off his leaves and scatter his fruit. Let, let the beast get away from under it and the fowls from under his branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump of his roots in the earth and even with a band of iron and brass and the tender grass of the field. And let it be wet with the dew of heaven. And let his portion be with the beast of, in the grass of the earth. Let his heart be changed from man's and let a beast's heart be given unto him and let seven times pass over him. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones, to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will, and setteth up over it the, beast, uh, the basest of men. This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now thou, O Belteshazzar, declare the interpretation thereof, for as much as all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation, but thou art able... For the spirit of the holy gods is in thee. Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was astonied for one hour, and his thoughts troubled him. The king spake and said, Belteshazzar, let not the dream of, or the interpretation thereof trouble thee. Belteshazzar answered and said, My lord, the dream be to them that hate thee, and the interpretation thereof to thine enemies. In other words, they're going to enjoy this one. The tree that thou sawest, which grew and was strong, whose height reached unto, unto the heaven, and the sight thereof, uh, thereof to all the earth, whose leaves were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all, under which the beast of the field dwelt, and upon whose branches the fowls of the heaven had their habitation, it is thou, O king, that art grown and become strong. For thy greatness is grown and reacheth unto heaven, and thy dominion to the end of the earth. And whereas the king saw a watcher and an holy one coming down from heaven and saying, Hew the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass and the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let, it, and let his portion be with the beasts of the field, till seven times pass over him. This is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my lord the king that they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven. And seven times shall pass over thee, till thou know that, thou, that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee, after thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule." Whereof, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break off thy sins by righteousness, and thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor, if it may be a lengthening of thy tran uh, tranquility. And all this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of twelve months he walked in the palace of uh, the kingdom of Babylon. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom? by the might of my power, for the honor of my majesty. Nebuchadnezzar took the glory. God let him know that he allowed him to get to that position. That he gave him the power. That he set up the kingdoms. And Nebuchadnezzar got to looking at all the things that he had, that he had accomplished because God allowed him to and said, look what I have done. And the Bible is clear, and it all came to pass. We're not going to read the rest of it because for sake of time, but uh, it all came to pass just like God told him it was going to come to pass. And he was brought low, so low that he was out in the field like an animal and his hair had grown and his nails and he just was a, he was a wild man. Come on down to... Um, after all that, Nebuchadnezzar said in verse 34, And at the end of the days, <laughs> I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me. And I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. If, if America is going to be great again, if we're going to get over this, this uh, predicament that we're in, it's going to take some men in leadership and men in, 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 in our government uh, to realize that. 
to realize that God started this nation, that God gave us what we have, and that God made us great. And if that doesn't happen, uh, we're going to be just in the picture of Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, we're just going to, uh, God, and you say, well, God, uh, you know, allow the, the nation of Islam to take us over. Yeah, he will. Yes, he will. Uh, there, I mean, you know, it, it, the only thing that's going to stop that is God. And if God doesn't see fit, if God doesn't uh, show mercy, then, uh, you know, obviously in the, in the end, we know that, you know, the Antichrist is going to have to rule. He's going to have to have power. We just pray that it's not in our time. We just pray, that, and if it is, that God hurry up and gets us out of here before it all gets too bad. Uh, but uh, back to Job chapter 20. So, so what Zophar is saying is, is dead on the money. He's, 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 he's got it right. He just doesn't have it right about Job. Again, he says in verse 6, Though his excellency, speaking of the wicked man, mount up to the heavens, and his head reach unto the clouds, yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. They which have seen him shall say, Where is he? And he shall fly away as a dream, and shall not be found. Yea, he shall be chased away as a vision of the night. The eye also which saw him shall see him no more, neither shall his place any more behold him. I mean, uh, you know, no doubt Hitler thought he was going to be, you know, ruling forever. He thought he was going to be able to, to take over this world and, 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 and reign, and, and, and now he's just a byword. Uh, same goes for any other uh, fly-by-night uh, uh, wicked man that thought he was going to, I mean, you know, you think of all these uh, characters throughout that we know throughout history, like, uh, you know... Uh, Jimmy Durante, or the, not Jimmy Durante, he was an actor, wasn't he? Uh, he played, probably played a gangster. Uh, but uh, these gangsters that, you know, they just, they got this idea that they're going to, you know, Bonnie and Clyde, they're going to just get away with everything. And, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't take long before God will cut, cut you down, before God will cut your legs out from under you. Back to Job chapter 20, look at verse verse 10. It says, His children shall seek to please the poor, and his hands shall restore their goods. His bones are full of the sin of the, his youth, which shall lie down with him in the dust. Though wickedness be sweet in his mouth, though he hide it under his tongue, though he spare it and forsake it not, but keep it, uh, but keep it still within his mouth, it is meat in his bowels, his turn, and it is the gall of ass within him. He has swallowed down riches, and he shall vomit them up again, and God shall cast them out of his belly." The picture is obvious. The picture is that uh, you know you're gonna you'll you'll be able to get away with it for a little bit, but God's gonna make it miserable for you in the end. So don't don't envy as as the psalmist said. Don't envy evildoers. Don't don't envy the things that you see them accomplishing on television and and how Hollywood shows you all the good good parts. Know that their their pleasure is gonna be cut down really short. Uh, their pleasure is going to end really soon. And so be careful when you start envying uh, this world and, and all that all that they that they have. All right, we're just